Let's see how we go there. Just make sure we're running. Excellent. Okay, let's bring that up on there. We can just see, make sure we got a few connections running. See where we are with camera and everything and sound. So yeah, I'm just a bit of uh, burning the midnight oil uh, today. We've got a bit of a rush on. It's been a very short week with us here at Fixer Frame in Brisbane. And uh, we've had just a stream, you know, with Easter, Easter holidays. With We've had uh, public holidays. We celebrated Anzac Day or uh, respected Anzac Day. And then that was a, a day off. And we've also recently, this week in Queensland, we had a public holiday. So we're right under pressure at the moment because we've got a lot of work to get out with uh, Mother's Day here in Australia uh, this weekend. And sort of quite a lot of pressure for things, all sorts of things going on for presentation. So I'm sort of hanging back a little bit today because I've got a shirt that uh, we're going to have a look at. Uh, we've got one of these, uh, it's a t-shirt and actually it's got the, the guys on the back there. This is a, a, a little army thing going on and this has got to be framed for a, a presentation for the morning. So I thought, oh, well, while I'm, while I'm here tonight actually having to do it, I'll just push it out live for you guys. You might get some tips from it. I may not uh, give a lot of instruction while I'm doing it, but sure, you can have a look at, at how I'm doing this. And if you need anything, you can always hit us up at, uh, at fixerframe.com.au or if you want to learn framing, uh, always uh, framersclub.com uh, or I think we've even got a, a link, certainly in YouTube, we've got a link underneath that uh, links to a jersey framing uh, training that's really easy if you want to learn how to frame shirts, jerseys, football shirts, memorabilia, uh, just visit that link and have a little bit of a look. Anyway, enough about the, the plug. Let's just dive in and have a look at what we got to go tonight. I'm going to pop the, uh, I'm streaming through a nice little uh, webcam. I'm going to pop it down onto the bench so that you can see what's happening here. And I'll try and talk you through some of the framing. If you've got questions, by all means, please ask them in the comments. Uh, so if you're on Facebook, ask them in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, ask them in the comments. Uh, sometimes I switch on the uh, chat functionality so I can see it uh, while I'm streaming. If I don't get to your question, I'll certainly have a look at it and answer you afterwards. So by all means, if you're joining me live, great. Otherwise, you're catching this on uh, replay. Uh, hopefully this all goes smoothly. Like there's, there's uh, no editing here. You're going to see exactly what happens. And uh, as I run through framing a T-shirt, with a, a little photo getting included in the frame and they've got a little uh, engraved plaque that's going on the bottom too. So I've got to turn the camera around, pop it on here. Hopefully you guys uh, can see everything and uh, just bear with me while I swivel this around because I'm just going to drop it down onto the table. Hopefully we get that. That's a, that's a pretty good view for being able to catch what's going on. So what I've got here, I, I just have a piece of uh, scrap mat board. I've got a black one just so it doesn't flare up on the camera so much. We're going to use this for cutting on. This is just a rubber surface on our on our table, one of our assembly tables, a non-marking rubber. And this t-shirt is actually going to be framed with the back side showing. So what, uh, what they want to see is this with, um, I think the guy's name's on the back. They screen printed it there and we're going to fold the uh, sleeves because they've got some the Australian army uh, or the Australian flag on the sleeves and a, another little logo on the other sleeve. So we're going to have to make uh, get this one in the frame. They've got a little uh, little photo and that photo is going to sit on on top here. They just want that inside and there's a little plaque, a little silver plaque that's going to be going down in the bottom. So quite a bit of complicated things going on for us, but we'll start with just getting the t-shirt the laid out and, and see how we go. What I've got here, I've got a little bit of, um, this is Art Care 3 mil uh, foam board, and I'm gonna use this just as a filler for inside this shirt. 
to try and get it to sit a little bit flatter. We could just work out and pin from there, but what I was gonna do is, is mark this up and see if I can use this piece of foam. I've cut it pretty much a little bit tight to the size of the edge of the shirt there, and I've kind of cut it to the length. We might need to trim some off, so I'm, I'm not too concerned. But I'll show you a couple little tips here with, with just getting this piece in. A little bit different if you're doing it face up, because obviously you would see the shirt a little bit differently from the front. But in this example, we're actually going to see it from the back. So we're only gonna cut a small arch where that, that piece is. And what I like to do there is I'm just gonna measure the middle of this piece of board, because that helps. Um, where the uh, center of that uh, collar is, often we'll cut on the face, so 540 mil, so we're here at uh, 270 is our, is our center. And I'm just gonna roughly, now this is something that, depending on how you, how you see it, you, you can uh, draw this. So I'm just gonna roughly uh, mark out this, uh, this shape onto here so that I know where, where to cut this board. So I've got a rough circle, I'm, and I'll show you how I'm, I mirror it to make it match. And I'm also going to mark along and just mark apart where the sleeve sits. And in fact, I'm going to use this side at this point. And reason being is I want, um, I'm going to take, and you'll see, to make it symmetrical, we're going to use one part from one piece to the other side. So at this point where I've got this central mark, I'm just gonna make a little vertical line through that. And I'm gonna cut a little, a little semicircle here. I'm just gonna freehand it. So first up, I'm gonna cut the vertical. Now that seems a little bit strange. I've gotta cut this whole circle out. But in order to get the shape, if you cut just half the shape, you can take that little piece which becomes your template to lay on the other side here. And that way you get it symmetrical. So then I draw that line and I can come back and cut the other circle there. Now it may need to be cut in further than that, but we'll start with that. So basically we've just cut a little arch out to match the top of the t-shirt. And then that straight piece that I'd cut there or that I've drawn up there. Take that off. And again, I'm gonna take that, that same piece and pop it on this side. It's gonna become my template for the other side. Yeah, sometimes people make up different templates. They have them saved or they have them drawn out. In most cases, we make them individually for each shirt that we work on. And that is because there's so many different sizes and permutations. But yeah, so we've used the two pieces to cut off there and the two little semicircle, which ends up giving us that, that T-shirt sort of shape along the shoulder line. Now, I'm just gonna pop it inside and have a bit of a look. I don't know how, whether this is gonna be too tight or not but it's like we're imagining we're packing a shirt or a business shirt you would fill to have some edge in there. So I just wanna put this board inside the shirt. Get the, get the sleeves to the corner there where we're thinking it's gonna go. Cut the little labeling. So in effect, our shirt is going to sit. We've got it sitting out sitting the end there, I'm not too worried. What I'm going to do is just have a look at where that can, can sit. So on, this, on, the, on the points there, I want to put a little stainless steel pin. 
And these ones are just some rustless, uh, rustless pins that we get, which are stainless. That way you're not going to have any issue with leaving rust marks or something going bad. So at this corner, I just want to bring the t-shirt the to that point because I'd like to see whether I can uh, pop a pin. And I'm going to pop the pin actually just in on the end. And the reason for that is I'm going into the foam itself. We can move these around. We'll have a look at what sits best when we get to it. So I might need to adjust these, but this is just a starting point so that we know how to position our, our piece. Now I want to get that neckline somewhere there. I think I'm going to have, oh, potentially that, potentially that seam, there is a seam there. I was thinking of not showing that, but the other one, both, both sides seem to want to show it. So we'll just take that out. So it's really going to come to that to that point. Just making sure I get up into the foam. I'll put a couple of pins in there actually. You can use a thimble if you need to. We tend to use combinations of little pliers. Um, I've often got my my trusty. Um, People use little needle nose pliers and things. I tend to have my, uh, in my belt, I always have my little uh, good old Swiss Army uh, little set of pliers. These are great for just working when you've got to push in a small pin because they're easy to get hold of. They've got a little, uh, a little tooth on the end of them. But a small pair of pliers can work quite well rather than an awl. And often you'll see me pushing it with the back of my fingernail rather than grabbing a, a thimble out. So yeah, that that I want to stretch that a little bit along that line. And I think I'm going to put another pin at this stage. Just up in through that seam on the top. Do the same thing on the opposite corner. So this is just going to get the, the actual feel for how the top of this is going to be. Some people cut, you know, different shapes, like you can taper with a lot of the football shirts nowadays, they are so, um, so stretchy. Like in the old days, they did used to be cotton, but now it's all various man-made fibers and a lot of them are very tight fitting. It's a little bit like get any of the athletic stuff. It's all designed to really hug. And also in the case of some of the, the sports like the rugby or I guess um, any of the contact uh, football anywhere in the world will tend to have a very tight fitting outfit so that opposition can't grab hold of you easily. You know, if, it's, if it sticks right onto your body you can't uh, you can't get hold of it or hold of the the person you're trying to tackle but in this case we're just looking at a t-shirt so the cotton it's cotton there so I've just put a couple in on the top so we've just got that position and I'm going to come down onto the to the middle here I want to see where we can get that to go because if it will come down I don't really like to um, I don't really like to uh, fix or fiddle around with the bottom too much. But you can see even just as it is there, that's starting to sit flat. You can see I've got the foam inside there. I may need to pull that down and put some pins in the base or a few little stitches. But at this stage, I'm just gonna let it sit there. I am gonna put a pin down near in the, in the base just to hold that one in position on the side do something on the other side and I might put some up and down the sides of it. Again, sometimes people would tuck this under and make it really tight. We tend to like to show the seam, but again, there's nothing wrong. If you wanted to stretch that over and pin it on the back, it's good. Depends on the look that you're actually after. 
I'm just going to put some pin up in under the arm. And again, with different shirts, you would pin it in different places. You really need to assess how much, how many pins it needs. This is not going to need a lot of pinning because it's quite uh, flexible and, it, and it's sitting reasonably flat with where it is. That actually probably you could iron this uh, if you wanted to, but it's sitting, it's sitting really flat for what it is. So when this actually goes into the frame, they want this sleeve to show the logo there. So we're probably going to put a put a little little pin underneath, and it's going to come in that way. I don't know. That's what the drawing we've we've had this drawn out. So yeah, they particularly want to see the the logos folded like that. So bef without putting any more, before I put any more pins into the actual. I might put one down there. There's a bit of a seam down in that corner. Which it might be nice just to wrap it around. I can feel where the where the, the seam ends there. And it's actually, let's have a look. It's just a little little bit of a little bit of a bulge. So I'm gonna put a pin in underneath. Sort of on along the edge but underneath. And that's just to bring that little harder um, the bit where they haven't trimmed it inside the shirt. Just to neaten that up. Sometimes we'll use uh, Velcro. It's quite useful. Some of the fabric Velcro is very handy if you need to fix things in place. Sometimes you can use uh, some of the iron-on fittings for a variety of, of things that you do. I yeah, just don't want that top piece to show, so I'm making sure that uh, I'm baking the collar, just make sure the collar's pinned nicely at that position. And so the backing for this is it's going on to a um, they've chosen a metallic a metallic silver. Hopefully this this is quite shiny, uh, but I think it's in keeping with what they want. It's this uh, sort of they want the metal feel. So when it sits on there, it's going to kind of sit there. Clark is going to go in the base. So I'm just going to position it there, and we'll we'll measure we'll measure it before we actually go too much further. But that's just what I want to check there is how far in we are here, and make sure that we can just get it centrally positioned. So that is pretty good. Pretty good. We'll play with the bottom, the base piece when we get to doing that. So at that point, that's where it's actually going to sit on the on the board itself. I am going to put some pins through the board inside and into the base. So this will go uh, through the foam and when we actually put it in some of the other places it will go through the, um, the fabric on the other side. So I'm just pinning straight down. I'm not worried about how these come out on the other side at this stage because what we're going to do is we're going to use these like a, uh, a stitch and you could stitch it, it's not an issue to, to stitch it itself. Now where this is going to fold over, I'm going to be able to put a pin here because it's not going to be seen. So I'm just going to go straight down, straight down into the, into the shirt and through into the backing. So I've pinned, I've pinned through on the shirt. I'm leaving these pins hanging out at this stage on the back.
apply a little bit of little bit of uh, tension there because I think it will help. So yeah, those pins. What I'm going to use is some of a little framers tape that we've got just in on the back of it. There are variations that people do of this. Some people use plastic tags, uh, like a clothing tag. But we, I've found that the stainless steel pins are pretty good. And at that point, I'm going to fold the pin. I'm just reaching underneath and actually folding that pin over. And I'm using the tape to hold that pin in place. So it's providing some. By folding it over, it's sort of making it almost like a, a staple or a stitch in that the, the back of the pin is folded over on the inside of the board. So these two have done the same in the middle. So yeah, this isn't particularly heavy or big, so we won't need to use an excessive amount of fittings or pins to hold it. Generally, in picture framing, we use uh, the maximum. Well, we tend to use the minimum amount of fixings in most things, given that you prefer that a fixing gives way than something gets damaged or um, or bumped or something, and then 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 a piece will will get damaged. So you tend to fix things with the rather less is more, if you know what I mean, when it comes to things like that. Now on the base here, I'm gonna put some pins in down in there too. We might use a fabric tape along this base section. But what I wanna do first of all is just put something in to, to, to fix it into place. Check where I've got that one fitted. That seam comes right down. So we're probably gonna drop we're probably gonna drop that one down a little bit in the in the base there too. But I'm gonna go through that that bottom section. Put a pin in. Again this is inside the shirt. Down into the board. I might put three along here. It just I've got one going, I've got a plaque going in the middle. And this doesn't have this is a very simple arrangement. It doesn't have uh, an extra border or anything on it. It's really the this is a basic presentation, but effective for what uh, these guys want to do with it. And you can add as many borders and colors and all sorts of things, but pretty much the fixings are the same. You're just adapting how many colors and whether you cut a shape around it or you add extra bits to it. But in this example, they're using really, really quite simple. And they don't want to go to any extremes. So a little little fixing inside. Let's see where that one we might need to remove the pin on the top there, just to get the top of this uh, this sleeve looking right. But then we'll we'll check out that when we get to here, because what's going to happen? You can cut. There's there's a couple of there's a couple of ways of dealing with this, and that is that we make a another piece. So it's quite um, it's quite possible we'll just make a uh, a section here. We'll have a little bit of a look at the shape of it.
just seeing whether I could use a, we'll, we'll do, a, do a couple of tests because we might be able to pin this down or we may be able to just measure it and make a triangular section. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at the actual size of it. See what would be nice, because it'd be good if we could get the whole of the flag in. And so some, sometimes the way of doing this is I'm gonna just have a, have a look at the dimensions and roughly I'm gonna mark something up because we're gonna cut. We come down, we're just gonna have a look. She's gonna run about, run about 200. All I'm doing is just marking up a template so about 75 I'm having a look at how this sleeve is just sitting at that point it's about 140 down and again we might modify this we'll just have a little bit of a look and see how it goes so she runs about 70 so I'm just drawing something up to work from this is just some mat board that I've got going on. And just from that central line, we had 70 mil and we'll come back up to this corner. And we got another at least 60 mil, let's say. We might trim some more off that if we if we need it. having a look at where the angle was. So it's gonna come down to here. On the other side, it might end up being a full triangle there. Sometimes you end up with the, the straight fold. Let's have a look. That stayed at, at, uh, at 60, except we're looking say 90 mil out from the center. So just gonna give this a quick quick look and see how, how it looks. Run off center. We may end up making like this will be one we'll just test this uh this shape and see how it looks and you'll see why i'm doing this in a sag because we could just pin it but if i take a a section and what i've done is this is actually 70 mil this is 90 mil this is down this point roughly matching the shape of what this this sleeve is sitting like when I think it looks all right, showing the logo. And I'm just gonna cut that, trim it up, and have a bit of a look. So this is one, just for one uh, of the sleeves itself. We'll check what happens when this is cut, because we may end up trimming it a slightly different shape, but this is a good starting point to work from. And if this shape works, we can then again, like we did with the arch uh, with the with the neckline we can use that for the other part of the sleeve and this is just a white mat board i could have used uh, again the um the foam but i'll show you why i'm using the mat board in a sec So this is this little 
this little template that I've cut. Just going to test it before we go any further. I just want to test it and see what happens, see how big it is, because I want to put that inside here. Now, it may be a little bit small, like I'm even looking at it thinking, hey, I might have made it a little bit small, but we'll just check. Because what I want to be able to do is take this sleeve around this template. And one good thing about uh, using a card template like this is you can actually give it a little bit of shape. So if we bend that so that we get some curvature into it, when you put it inside the sleeve here, it actually looks a little bit more realistic than having just the flat pulled section. So if this was sitting here, We can use that as our that's going to be pretty good like that is that is sitting that is sitting pretty good for me i could possibly make it a little bit bigger like I, i'm thinking i'd like to bring this up and i'd like to bring the sleeve down as far as i can but again i've just got to see how, whether i can cover the entirety of this fold here because we don't really want the to see a, a ragged bit where the uh, sort of under the sleeve so potentially that piece there i'll just put a pin in there temporarily we'll have a look and see whether we need to do any more pinning but that's just to tuck in some of that that slack there because i'll put that down this one i'm going to mirror that and make another one of these for the other side. This time I'll bring it straight from the from the corner there. So again, both yeah, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of picture framers spend a large part of their time framing varieties of memorabilia whether it be sporting memorabilia or military memorabilia or just various sort of items ephemera things that people have collected and i mean it's a great way to display uh, your memories is in frames uh, you know we we joke a lot about people keeping you know everybody has at least five pictures uh, in their drawers um, sitting there waiting for someone or you know to that, you know they, that they need a frame for well it isn't just only that you've got photographs and pictures in your drawers you've got lots and lots of interesting items like we've framed many uh, many many things over the years all sorts of uh, fun things and it's a great way to to make something that's a talking point in your in your home when you when you have some some fun things framed up and on the wall really adds a lot of a lot of interest so yeah this one will sit up in here we just have a bit of a look at this point check where that pin is i think i'm going to take there's i put in a pin on this top corner when we first started i'm just going to take that out we'll put we can put another one in i just want to see where this where this little this little sleeve's going to sit yeah that's quite nice so i'm just going to give that a bit of a bend don't want a huge don't want it huge bulging out or anything but it just sits a little bit more natural if you've if you've if you've added a little bit of texture to that to that arm yeah so that can that can come in and sit there kind of thing let's have a look there's there's the logo So 
Do the same with tucking up the little slack bit. There's some, there's some slack under here that we just want to get out of the way so that it, it presents a little bit better in that, in that point. So I'm just putting a pin into the board. Yeah, so that can that can come down more or less looking at where it's gonna sit in relation to the other text and words in this. That's gonna sit quite nicely there. I might just put a pin straight in to this corner because I quite like how how that's how that's sitting. So when I've got it in in that position, I quite I quite like how that's sitting. So quite happy to put a Put a pin into this so i'm just ha hanging it off the edge of the bench so that i can get to the base of it because i don't want to pin down into the bench of course so i'm just going inside inside the sleeve it's a little bit tough because what i've got is the give it a bit of a wiggle I've got the board itself that we're that we're pinning into, and we've got the the fabric also involved in it. So yeah, it can be a little bit hard on the pins itself, but if you that's why I like the little pliers because if I can hold them close to the knee, the end of the pin, it tends not to to bend. Again, people have different different approaches that they use with this sort of uh, mounting. So that's going to sit quite well there, and then I'm going to come over onto this other side, and we're going to put a pin a pin through into the inside of this sleeve. It's a little bit tricky to work on that angle on this bench. Often there's a little bits of tweaking here and there that you do to get uh, things to sit flat. It's a little bit tough, but by doing it that way, I've got something securely holding those sleeves. Sometimes they can just be folded. They don't need the insert piece that we're putting inside. But in this case, I quite like the idea of having that form coming through into the, into the arrangement. I have to adjust this a little bit so that we get it just sitting nicely without showing the, the board inside. But that's something I can sort out in a minute. And likewise, I'll do the other one. So this is just the first bit. We get that. We'll get this mounted fairly quickly now, and then we'll look at how we fit how we fit the piece. This has an interesting bit of uh, anti-reflective glass going into it, so it's going to really look quite special when it's all done. See if we can get all of that. more a case of where this fits in the, in the inside here, so that we don't overlap anybody's name and that we, we make the, the sleeve look right. Want it to be symmetrical with the other side. So again, just bringing it over the edge of the bench so I can put a pin through that, 
that corner. You can bend the pins if you um, if you try to. You, you tend to have to let the sharp point of the pin do the work rather than trying to really force at it. Sometimes it's when you're rushing that you end up bending the pin or bending the end over on the pin. And then you have to start again because you can't get it through the board. It's rolled up, you end up rolling up inside the actual mounting that you're doing. So yeah, this one's gonna come down and sit quite nicely there. In fact, I might even do a little bit more tension on that other sleeve just to bring it down like this one this one this one's sitting really nicely where where it is one good thing about pinning and, and all of these things is they are pretty much reversible methods and handy if you want to change something and also if you want to get the uh, realign it as long as you're actually covering the pinhole you can always do that you put it in the wrong place. Yeah, that's sitting, you know, even at this stage, I'll just see if I can hold it up a little bit so you can see the, even at this stage, it's sitting quite well. We got this one really sitting quite nicely. The, the, the piece inside has given it that nice, little gentle arch but it's also uh, given some some body and you don't see it here this one I've just got it just peeking out a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back over to here and add a little bit more tension into that into that side of the arm so bring that over I think we can put that there What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the internal pin that I've put on it and I'm just going to bring externally a little bit of tension into, into that sleeve. And what that's going to do, that should help cover. So the pin's going to go inside the sleeve, I'll just put it fairly near to the corner. We're going to do that again on the inside. So we're going to do both sides of this one. Just to add a little bit more tension to that arrangement. So yeah, sometimes you end up framing the front of shirt. Sometimes you end up framing the back. Sometimes we even end up folding them up. Like we've had, we had one... A uh, customer whose husband had played several uh, matches, big matches, and for various teams over the years, and she wanted to display them all, but she really didn't want this massive shrine of huge amount of, of uh, football shirts framed. So what she did is she folded, it was actually really a nice arrangement, the nine shirts were folded into a, um, it almost looked like a, uh, a flag, you know, like one of the semaphore foot type flags because the, um, the pattern of the different colours of shirts alternated around and how she arranged it with the collars, you know, we went, went through quite a lot of uh, folding and uh, it made a really quite a, an, an attract, attractive piece at the end of the day with what she really didn't want to, she really didn't want to put it on the wall, 
but she didn't want to have this massive thing in her house, but she did want to honour her husband by doing this arrangement of his, uh, his achievements. And so it was kind of a happy compromise to, to get a number of them in to a frame together and have it looking really, really good. So this is going to sit, I've actually got a, uh, a black backing that I'm going to put underneath. And the reason I'm using this black backing here is that where we've held our, our shirt, we have some, some those folds where we've put our, our pins in and we've actually taped over and brought them down into like a stitch like formation. And what's going to happen with that is as we uh, put it together, so I've got a number of number of pieces there. I'll put it face down and you might be able to see all of them. So there's not a lot, but we've got a few spots, each of these spots where a pin's come through, and then it's been folded over and it's been taped down. We make sure they are secure and that they're not going to, to come off at this stage. But if you need to get it off, we can take that off. Um, right along there, I'm actually going to just use some uh, double-sided tape. And in this example, the reason I want to do that, I just want to hold, give it some extra security in terms of what it will hold to the backing that I'm putting behind here. But also I'm going to be fixing to this backing a, a plaque where they want their, their plaque to go. In fact, even before I fix this, we might fit the uh, we might fit the um, photograph into position. So it probably doesn't need this, but it is going to add some rigidity to this board that we've got going on on the face because I don't really want it buckling up. You could use a thick, I'm just using a thin double sided here. You could use uh, a thicker board than that. I'm not peeling those off at this stage. This is just a double sided release tape. Um, I just want to have a quick check on the face before I put this down. And I want to have a look at where we're going to put the actual photograph because the photograph they are wanting to sit on there too. And I think I'm going to use the photograph as part of the fixing to impart a little bit of tension into this into this shirt to bring that down a little bit. Because at that point, I think I'm going to put some pins through. And it's going to sit in there, that's quite nice. Then they got their plaque on the bottom, that's going to be quite nice. So at that point, even before I pin the, pin the uh, I'm going to pin the photograph on, what I'm going to do at that point is I'm going to put some pins in here. I'm going to come right the way through the board, through the shirt again. And the reason for that is I just want to add a little bit of uh, vertical uh, tension, if that's the right word, to bring down this line in the middle of the shirt a little bit. And by Putting a little bit of tension in there, it just releases some of the tension here, so that we're able to tweak to tweak that look on the that, that look on the bottom there. And these two pins that I'm putting in here will be covered by where we put the photograph. So probably not 100% essential, but it is going to add some more support, and it is going to help with releasing the tension in the base of this shirt, which will make it just nice when it comes to, to uh, draping nicely on that bottom, bottom uh, edge. So again, I'll just get underneath. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a buckle here, but that, what, that's, what, that's, what that's doing is that's giving a little bit of tension to this area and it's reducing the tension in this in this bottom piece which is just going to allow that that hem to to drape very nicely without having to put any other fixing in there so 
photograph's going to go on. Should check measurements, but a lot of the time with something like this, if the shirt is stretched a certain way, or the um, or the printing on the shirt is not exactly in position, it's better that the photograph looks right in relation to the actual printing on the shirt than it, than it measuring right, if you know what I mean. So there are different uh, different ways that people would do that. Now I'm just going to skew pin this in. There is a thin, it's a black core uh, edge on the outside of this mat and there is a, a thin a three millimeter foam that has been reverse beveled back from the edge so that you don't you don't see that and I'm just going to pin down into it because the pin itself will go I'll push it all the way in in a sec I just want to get it in position the the pin is going to hold that photograph by just coming down through the foam going to go into the backing just like we were doing with the others just want to be careful because they're not using a um, an external frame on this piece we tried to conceal the mounting of the photograph they just want it looking like the photograph is just laid in there and so we've put a little uh, black uh, mounting board around the photograph itself and then the get in there with just don't want to damage the edge or the shirt itself but I want to be able to push into it without so I can tuck the, the pin, mounting pins underneath the lip of the mat itself so that you don't see it. And then underneath there, we can come in and put, again, a couple of little tabs just to hold those mounting pins. We just don't want them coming out Four, pin, four pins on this should be more than enough. Yeah, because the edge, edge of mat board is quite fragile. We don't want to fray it or have any little dents or marks on it when it's being mounted like this. It's really there just to um, finish the photograph off and provide a miniature frame on it without going, without them going to a whole, a whole picture frame. Yeah, but there are lots of solutions to this type of display. This is just one. So we've got our we've got our uh, we've got our photograph pinned on now, sitting sitting in front with its little black border to match the other parts of the logos and what have you. I'm just going to go onto the back of it now, and we'll remove uh, this release film on our double sided because I want to stick this down. Again, partially, there's a couple of reasons why I would mount this down onto another backing. And that is that the, the pins themselves, the tape will hold, but there's an extra security if you're using some uh, double-sided here just to hold the, uh, the whole thing together. And it's going to help a little bit with extra support when it's in the frame it'd be nice to think just put this one underneath 
be nice to think that the um, any weight involved in displaying the jersey is supported by more than just mat board. We've seen a number when you people don't actually add any backing support to it, that the mat board buckles over time and often it ends up collapsing under the weight. Whereas if we put some double sided or if we glue it like various other glues, if we glue it, I'll put a bit more in the middle. Gonna put a couple of pieces, a couple more pieces on there. Just purely, I've got such a thin double sided at this point. I'd prefer to use one of our thicker ones, but we're actually waiting on one lot to come in at a thicker size. Get a big run on things with this short week. A lot of the uh, suppliers have been struggling to get stock out and couriers have been overloaded because they've been going for weeks now on short weeks. So uh, yeah, there's a few things that put everybody under pressure. Nothing like having uh, closures to affect how much work you can get done. So at this point, I'm now going to put it onto this black backing. And the reason for that is uh, this is going to give us some security in terms of extra stiffness. And what it's going to do is provide a relief where we are going to mount our flask. I'm just going to have a little look around the way. Yeah, trick any time if you are using double sided tape for anything. If you bend your board, it will actually push down and stick. Whereas if you got it flat, you can move it around quite a bit before there is any grab from a double sided tape. But you do need to be a little bit careful with that because we don't want the thing to stick in the wrong position. So I'm just going around and mount that down. So now what we've got is we've got our little bit of a push in the middle there just to make sure that the, the double sided has grabbed on the back. So what we've got is we've got quite a stiff, hold it down a bit lower, we've got quite a stiff board going on with our shirt having been mounted onto the backing and we've got our photograph there and our little, um, little void here where we're going to put our plaque. So we'll pop a plaque in there. They want this black uh, edging to match the whole, uh, the whole color scheme that they got going on. And you'll see when we do the, um, the finished uh, frame here, that it also has this black and silver uh, color scheme. Just give that a little bit of a wipe. This is just a, a silver flexi and metallic surface. Uh, plastic based plaque, it's been laser engraved, it's in a brushed silver. So plaque is on with border in the middle, so silver background, plaque on, shirt on, there's a little bit of a tension adjustment that we're going to make along this line and what I will use in that point is a little bit of some uh, fabric tissue, I think. Um, there it is there. Hmm. I'll just see how we go. Just depending on how that shows in the light, but it's looking pretty good. So, what happens? That is pretty much right for our mounting process. So I'm just going to pop it out of the way for a tick. And I'm going to grab basically our 
a fry. Now I'd already put a piece of anti-reflective glass in here. You can see a little bit of minor reflection from it when we move it around. But once this is actually in the frame, it's going to be practically invisible. And one tip with handling this stuff, if you don't have to touch it, don't touch it. I've gone through and worn cotton gloves when cutting this and putting it in. I'm giving it a light wipe, but I'm not using a glass cleaner on it at this stage because it is pretty much clean. I do want to check the fingerprints, but you can generally feel like with, with this type of glass, you can feel a bit tight in that corner. I can hear a few little, oh yeah, when I, when I move it, it just moves a little bit. But what um, you can generally feel when the glass is clean. So a lot of people have seen me before, one of my favorite glass cleaning tools, particularly with the museum glass and uh, other things is, is great toilet paper, like one of the soft ones. Now it does give off some lint, which is, is an issue, <coughs> but with the toilet paper, it's so soft, it doesn't scratch some of these high-end glass and it really allows you to feel through your fingertips when you're cleaning it as to whether there is any dirt. And so if you're polishing the glass and it feels like you're on ice, like it's an ice skating rink, and there's no grab to it, you know you've got it pretty clean. It's when you come across areas where it feels like there's something a little bit more friction at that point, and that is usually where there's a little bit of dirt. So in this case, giving it a good clean. I will clean it again, but uh, that is just the first step. Now I just got to move a few things out of the way so we can get this on the bench properly. Don't know whether we'll need any more pins at this stage, but we'll, we'll find out when we, when we get to it. Nice to keep things that are you don't want any metal bits, staples, pins, things around that can actually dent your frame. This is one of the reasons we use this, um, this rubber mat that I'm working on here. The rubber mat is a non-marking type of rubber and that then won't hurt the frame itself. It won't scratch it in any way. Now I've pre-cut because what's going to happen, it doesn't just go in. In this case, some cases you put a mat board around the outside, but in this example, what we're going to do is I've made some spaces from a, a, a black mounting board or black mat board, and I've mounted that to a three millimeter uh, foam board. And that's enabling me to make a space that's going to go inside the frame here and provide an air gap from that particular uh, shirt from touching the glass. If you'd used a um, another additional mount board around the outside, that can be spaced and stop the thing touching the glass. But in this example, we're going to use the uh, use the mat board strips. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to cut these. Sometimes we cut these to length prior to bringing to the assembly table. But in this example, I am going to cut it to length in situ. And I want the, the, the top and bottom pieces. So I just want to make a quick score on there. I could put another board down, but I'm going to work straight with my square. I want a little piece there, actually. I know I've got my glass clean under there. I'm going to, we'll blow it. We haven't cleaned it in terms of getting dust out of the way. And often I'd have this out of the way. I'm working on the table, but I want you guys to be able to see. So we'll, we'll keep it where we are. So just gradually cut through. I might even 
even just break the end of that one. These, um, we have different types of blades. We often like using these black hard carbon steel blades. And the reason for that is, is they hold their edge so much better than your standard. So you see the difference in color? These are just a steel blade. Once you've used some of the black ones, you will never go back to using the steel ones. In fact, we got these steel ones by mistake because they were packed in the normal black packet. And we like to have this, uh, the high strength, uh, usually the, um, there are a couple of different brands, but KDS or the, the Kai Cut ones from Japan uh, are pretty good. It's like you want something that's going to be uh, really a high grade steel, a carbon steel. And it makes such a difference when you're working, like the, the cut, the cuts, the cutting power of them and the fact that they don't go blunt for a long period of time. The extra money you pay for those blades is made up in easily you easily cover the cost in terms of how long they last but again the, it easily saves you the frustration of having a knife that is not sharp um, and i know people like you know that they'll use cheap blades and then keep breaking bits off and having a a, uh, a you know a sharp edge but the, the carbon steel ones just are superb so I just put that spacer in. I put a little bit of uh, double-sided there. Sometimes we would use double-sided and glue together. I've put the vertical, uh, the, the top of the frame in first and I'll do the top and the bottom there. And the reason for that is some people will pinwheel it and all sorts of different methods they use to, to fit these into position. But um, I'm doing top and bottom. And the reason I like that way is because in this instance, the vertical of the uh, member of the fray, of the spacer, will support the, will support the actual, will support the, the piece on the top. So I'm just gonna mark that up again. I just use a little, little, um, little square in order to get that nice and 90 degree cut. And again, I'm not forcing it. I could cut this a lot, uh, a lot quicker and a lot harder, but I just work through it gradually because I want to have that, that edge nice and at 90 degrees and clean, even though we're using great sharp blades, you still got to take care most of the cutting, you know, if you're ever trying to force your way through cutting mat board or cardboard, uh, you generally are going to damage the board or hurt yourself, and uh, or both. So I tend to cut things a little bit more gently, particularly in you, you, you when you whenever you force something when you're cutting, it tends to not work. So yeah, nice and nice and gradual cutting and gentle cutting. So yeah, spacer, spacer down that edge. Let's turn it again 90 degrees. It's easier than me running around the table. So my top pieces, I'm gonna lay this one down and put my square on top. So I can just, I'm gonna eyeball this. So I'm looking straight down the square line at the, uh, the frame inside. I haven't got any board underneath at this point, but I'm going to cut through the actual matte surface, which is going to be the face. And then once I'm into the foam, it's relatively easy to cut that piece off without support. And you can see now that if I show you this, it's actually dead tight with the corner. We'll put that piece in. So it's one thing that sort of surprises a lot of people that are doing uh, memorabilia framing 
or that are getting something framed in a frame shop and, uh, and they might be shocked by the price. But one of the things that you find is most of the framers, uh, the professional ones have really quite high standards and they are using materials that are both high quality and also they are using uh, their time. And most of the picture frames that get made, even though we have great fast equipment, computerized equipment, all sorts of equipment to make our lives easier, a large part of framing is the manual uh, mounting, handling, and working with the frame, making the frame. And each craftsman's people can make them uh, quicker or slower, but generally speaking, making quality picture frames takes a degree of time. And if you're doing it yourself, uh, ever if you do if you do your own framing, that is really where you save the money is in the labour time, not so much the um, material costs, so to speak. You may save a little bit on material, but it is really the only the labour that you're saving. In fact, if you're going into a shop to pick colours uh, or to do your own framing and pick colours, we'll often say to people, well, you the difference between a custom frame and a frame you make yourself is really our time and the expertise and consultation time. So a lot of people that want to do their own framing, if you go into a frame shop and don't, uh, if you ask them nicely, let them know that you want to frame something yourself, then they might allow you to look at samples and things, but don't expect to take a lot of their time because that's really their billable part of their job and so that's why sometimes people doing it themselves uh, get a little bit of friction with some frame shops because frame framer cannot stand there and help you pick colors and give you advice about how to do it all and then you go off and you do it yourself so just respect your local framer you know most framers are pretty good if you talk to them nicely and just explain if you want to do it yourself that you need some help with some materials you'd like to buy them but you don't want to waste their time and usually then you'll get on okay they won't uh, they won't have a go at you and you'll often get a better deal so in fact that reminds me of a there's there's a guy i know that does caravan uh trailer repairs he's a welder he's an old guy and he has a sign up in his workshop and it says uh there's a number of different signs he has but he says price is variable depending on customer's attitude and largely he is entirely right because if you go in there and you don't waste his time and you have a nice chat to him he'll treat you really well whereas if you go in there and mess him around for a long time you're going to find that uh, he's not going to really entertain you too much so what i've done there i've got that in position i've given it a clean We've gone around, we put spacer all the way around this frame. I'm going to use an air blower on a line. If you're doing it yourself, you could use a brush. Um, in fact, we have uh, anti-static rollers, anti-static brushes, various tools, even big, like this is a wallpaper type brush. You can use these to brush dust out of frames. And we actually have, we have different ones. So we've got a really, really big brush there, brushing things off. And we do have some like long handled, might be out on the back, on the back assembly bench. We do have some long handled anti-static whisks and things which work quite well. Some white. There. So being such a clear product when this is on the picture, I do want to make sure there isn't any dust on the inside. I haven't cleaned the outside at this stage, but I'm going to give the shirt itself. I'm just giving that a blow with the blower just off camera.
I just don't want anything to drop. So I could stand the frame up, but I'm just going to put it down and pop this into the frame. I don't want to move it around too much. A little bit snug. Okay, so I can see where I am. I just, when I've mounted this board, oh, it's right on. This edge is a little bit snug. It could be that the frame is a little bit flat, a little bit bowed. You just give it a feel. Take that back out again. What it is, is I have about two mil. I'll show you on camera so you can see. Down this edge here, I don't know whether you can actually see it, but I have approximately two millimeter of uh, material hanging out from my uh, shirt. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a piece under it. In fact, I can take it from the other end. I was gonna just take, take a slice off this. Often I'll move the, the frame off the, bent, off the uh, table to do that but we're gonna leave this sitting on top here just so I can keep working and show you guys. If in doubt, like uh, definitely move your, I won't use that ruler. And get the big non-slip, uh, non-slip ruler. So I just wanna take the shaving off this edge and it's literally maybe not even two millimeters. I know my board is a little bit shy of length on this, but we're going to be okay. So again, I'm just taking it really easy. So you can see what I've done is I've just taken off that little shaving down the outside edge there, a little bit in the center here where I could want to just run off a little bit. I'll just take that off. This is the beauty actually of having one of these black blades. They are that sharp that um, I can shave this like thinner than a, a piece of cheese if we really need to. Now I just want to be careful because at that point we've got a little bit of dust from that cutting and we don't particularly want any of that coming into the frame so we're going to give it another blow again like that would be one of the things that picture framers probably spend the most time in ensuring that people's pictures are dust free and we do a lot in terms of keeping our workshops at a level where we can work without it having a lot of dust, certainly in the fitting area. Put that one up out of the way. So yeah, you're gonna come again and we'll put that one That's a nice fitting. We're nice and flush here. This is level. But the reason for that is, is because I'd measured the thickness of this black spacer that I used on the inside so that I'd calculated the height so that this would all finish nice and flush when we were going to finish it off. So some people like to have it sitting down below the backing there. I've just got it level. What I'm going to do, we're going to use our trusty air stapler, wide crown, Again, different people use different tools. This takes a variety of height of small uh, staple. And I'm gonna take, I'll just get a strip of them. You can use stainless steel ones if you're wanting to add another level to your framing. And certainly when you're dealing with 
uh, archival stuff, helps with uh, preventing rust. So at this point, I'm just going to uh, nail at prob pro probably uh, oh, 30 degrees or something. Not, it's not right down into it. I come across the backing and into the frame. I don't want to have a, a staple hanging out or coming through the spacer. I might need to check that I've got my compressor on because the pressure is quite down on this. When the guys were leaving this afternoon, they turn off a lot of the equipment. So we've still got some re residual air pressure, but it might it might not be quite enough. Let's see how we go. You can always hold, like on smaller frames, you want to hold behind the frame when you're when you're pinning so that you don't um, you don't damage your frame. So you, you can always use your thumb and and staple together well then it's like you have two hands on it but you never want to put your finger in front some of them have various safeties um, but yeah take care when you're using one of the staple guns so you can see i've gone around i've put probably six fittings six and five fittings on each side there i could add more but it doesn't really need more the purpose of that is is to keep that held in place and not to put too much pressure because you don't want things to buckle. And so now if I come around to the front, what I'll do is I'll just lean the camera back, bear with me. You might, might, just, might just pan it up so you can have a bit of a look. So here we have our shirt in the frame and you can see it's set back. I would then give this a nice clean the glass is pretty clean already. Uh, you can see the level of reflection. It doesn't have a great deal of reflection. There's a little bit that you might catch up in the in areas if we have lights there, but it's a very high clarity product. This is one of those um, anti-reflective coated products. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I've had a I have a quick look to make sure there's no dust on the inside and that I'm happy with generally how the how the piece is looking and then we take it back down onto the bench again and I'll put this back down so we just get a get a quick look you guys have probably seen our finishing so you can seal this with either a a, a picture frame as tape like we have various adhesive ones we have water-based ones Water-based ones are great. They tend to not come off as much as some of these adhesive ones. The, this is a Rinrei brand from Japan. It's probably my preferred adhesive variety of tape for sealing the backing on a picture. Uh, but again, people have different preferences. The thing about um, pressure-sensitive tapes or, or these type of adhesive tapes is all of them function on the... Uh, the fact that it needs uh, time and pressure, time, temperature and pressure to affect uh, a good bond. And so I use a little uh, nylon block and this has different shapes on it that we use for various angles and, and rubbing tape down. But if I get into that tape and I actually give it a burnish with this, what happens is I'm warming that tape up through the friction of applying the burnisher and that then helps that tape bond very securely to this backing board and to the frame because you don't want it peeling off now some people use a paper dust cover like you see a lot of american framers like to put a brown paper um, in in this example uh, I've always found that the tape itself adds more strength to the whole frame package than if you've used a, a paper backing. The paper backings tend to, um, what they do is they do provide a dust cover, but they don't provide any tension between the backing and the, the taping. And the actual tension of that tape helps keep frames uh, square. So I've always been a fan 
I'd be a big fan, of course, of the water-based one because it shrinks when it dries and that pull, pulls everything together. So at this point, I've cut my tape. It's all about two millimeter in from the edge. You never want to tape right up to the edge. Seal it down. I'm going to have a quick look, make sure I know which way's up. So this is the base down here. And at that point, we're going to put a couple of little felt bump-ons. These go in the corners. They are there to stop pictures going moldy. They also stop your wall from um, getting marked. And then we put, a, we put our brand uh, checklist on. Make sure I've got one here. So, yeah, we have a, a specific 18-point um, uh, checklist that we guys developed and use for Fixer Frame, and that is our quality assurance, because we generally worked through and found that by identifying and uh, noting down the processes that we do, it makes us better framers because we actually pay attention to what what is going on and we use our um, at various stages we check all of our processes now hangers this one could hang just straight on to vertical hangers like that would be probably my preference because of the size of it um, but what I'll do is I'll put on a couple of, uh, I might put on a couple of uh, regular, regular D-rings. Like you've seen these things before. There's a little double hole ring. There's a double, or a double hole strap hanger. There are triple holes. This is just a single hole variety. And we could put them across here and put a cable. And often in Australia, people like to hang them like that because that's how they assume pictures are. But a lot of the time in a club or something, have them vertical, straight onto two hooks, they're not going to move. And we generally position them a third of the way uh, down from the top. And so in this example, the frame is 920, 920 mil external. So we're basically 300 or thereabouts. So at 300, we make a little hole Just using an awl. Some people would drill a hole. And then I'm going to put about a 16 or quite a long screw because we're only using one fitting point here. Some people would use multiple fittings, but this is pretty secure for this size. You need to, you need to judge your fitting according to what you're actually framing. So yeah, if you're in doubt, definitely go heavier than lighter. Uh, you do not want pictures to fall off the wall. But there's a number of components that go into making up the whole uh, the whole frame package in terms of strength. And in this example, I'm going to go and I'm using probably one of our heavier wires that we have here. This is a 27 kilo. We always think of it as number six. Um, and a little little knot again out of the out of the ring around itself back down into the hole and then so that then cannot slip because it's like a slip knot itself and then we twist it off the twists don't number of twists don't really matter the twists are more cosmetic it's actually the knot itself that is the, the functional part by doing that double twist around the ring and again, I'm going to have this quite loose because I will expect someone to hang this on at least two hooks. Or if they don't want to hang it on two hooks, there's enough room there that they can pivot this up and still use the hooks without the wire. So I'm going to have the wire right up there. Share something. There are varieties of hangers. The 
You know, you can get all sorts of fittings that fix pictures to walls. Just make sure that you're choosing something that's strong enough for what you're framing. So this is going to be a cable that they can hang it on. They can hang on two hooks here, or if they want, they can rotate these and hang straight on two hooks. They don't need to use the wire. So basically, I would go around and double check this again, make sure that everything is good. But let's just bring this up. You've probably got a bit of light from, I've got a, a studio light behind me over there. Just, just running some really big LEDs. If I, if I bring this over, where are we? If I bring this over here and I turn it around, we'll probably get the, there's our LED uh, light in the background. So I'll just pivot it off a little bit so that you don't get that. We can turn this around this way a little bit. There you can see one of those, those LED lights. So yeah, basically we've got a good bit of um, anti-reflective glass in this and this is pretty much done apart from giving it a, a bit of a clean. We'll pop it into some, uh, some bubble wrap and have it ready for someone to pick up uh, tomorrow morning because they've, they've got to give us a gift tomorrow. So a bit of a late, late one for us today. In terms of uh, in terms of framing but uh, if you want to learn more about picture framing you can always hit us up at framersclub.com uh, you can always get hold of us at fixaframe that's f-i-x-a-f-r-a-m-e dot com dot au we're in Brisbane Australia and if you want to learn picture framing we've got DVDs and all sorts of things as well but we are a full service custom framing business and generally when I demonstrate I show you guys real work that we've got going on. So we're not sort of just showing you things that are just kind of like a dodgy way of doing something because there's no point. If you want to learn how to do things, uh, by all means, I'm here to help you. And certainly if you need our skills to make something for you, come and see us at Macrobe. So anyway, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'll catch you next time on Broadcasting Live from Fix a Frame at Macrobe. It's been David Shumi. Thank you for coming. We'll see you next time.